Hello, my name's David Howard, and I'm speaking to you from the University of York, and I'd like to discuss the MP3 player. I expect many of you have an MP3 player, rather like this one. But have you ever wondered why they're so small, and how it is that so many tracks can be stored on what is a very small piece of equipment? This is what I'd like to briefly explore. And it turns out that it's not just engineering. We need to look at how the ear works and take advantage of some of the features of hearing. When we do this, it turns out we can throw away 90% of a CD track and just put 10% of the original track on one of these and you won't hear the difference. Now, for a manufacturer, that's fantastic as a business plan. And providing you can't hear the difference, MP3 players will carry on being very successful. So what is it about hearing that we can take advantage of when designing an MP3 player? Well, of course, we've got two ears, not one, but I've got a model of one ear here. And the sound enters the ear canal by the pinner travels down the ear canal to the eardrum, and finally, after being transmitted via the three small bones, arrives at this snail-like structure known as the cochlea. And it's the way that the cochlea functions in converting those vibrations into the neural impulses which travel to the brain that allows us to take advantage of the hearing system in the MP3 player. Specifically, it's a feature known as masking. Now, masking is something you've experienced. If you're running a bath and you're trying to chat to somebody at the same time, the sound of running water masks the speech of yourself or your friend. And you have to speak louder to be heard. Or you're driving along in a car and the driver's listening to the engine note to know when to change gear. If the radio is loud, the sound of the engine could well be masked. But masking is more specific than that when you look into the details. It turns out that low notes, that's low notes down here, have a tendency to mask higher notes. So higher notes are lost in the presence of those low notes. So what happens if you're listening to some music? Well, the instruments that create low notes might be a kick drum or a bass guitar. And these will tend to mask instruments that create higher notes, such as pianos or brass or even the hi-hat cymbal or the snare drum. So in this piece of music, you could hear those particular instruments. And the key to MP3 is that every time a low note plays, at that instant, that tiny piece of time, everything else is lost. So when the bass drum goes, Doo! at that instant, all those other notes are simply lost. You can't hear them. So we can throw them away. When the bass guitar plays, that also is a low note. So at the instant the bass guitar plays, everything else that's higher than the bass guitar, your ear will not hear. So we can throw it away. On average, we can throw away 90%, leaving that 10%, which is what you get when you buy an MP3 track. You only get 10% of the original CD track. And of course, for the manufacturers, they hope you can't tell the difference, which most of us can't, so it's not an issue. So this MP3 player is an example of engineering in action. It's an example of engineering taking advantage of a natural phenomenon to do with our hearing system. Because after all, engineering is about putting technology to use for the benefit of mankind. <laughs>